everybody, Erica Serwin here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. This week I am featuring the Fruitful Blessings from the Stampin' Up! Let's see if I can remember. September to December 2023 mini catalog. Um, I really loved this bundle specifically because of the corn dies. I've got another project where we use those. So if you're looking for inspiration um, for using this set, make sure you click the link here on YouTube. Go back to my blog. I'll have four projects total. Um, today's card has lots of little things that I can't wait to show you. We're going to watercolor. We're going to use stamp and blends. We're going to use these enamel effects. Um, lots of fun things. So, um, before I get started, let me, hopefully you guys can see all my blends. I just pulled out all my fall floral colors and I'm going to tell you what I have. Now I'm not going to use all of them probably. Um, but you know, pick and choose whatever you want to do. Um, pecan pie, copper clay, calypso coral, actually Cajun craze, calypso coral, pumpkin pie, daffodil delight, old olive, um, Moody Mauve and Blackberry Bliss. Now, we're going to use Moody Mauve to color these flowers. Um, I use Blackberry Bliss as my background, but Moody Mauve, um, well, Blackberry Bliss Stampin' Blends are too dark, and you just kind of lose the detail in the blends, so I found that Moody Mauve does pretty well. Okay, before we get to our coloring with blends, let's do our background. You can see I've got a watercolor wash back there. Um, very easy and a nice little subtle background that you can create I'm using watercolor paper and I'm just going to use pool party and I'm squeezing my ink pad so that I just get a little palette there of um, of ink and then I'm going to take my water painter I'm going to add some water and I'm just going to do a wash there's really no right or wrong way except I'm losing bristles it looks like that you don't want. <laughs> I'll be able to pull that off in a sec. But just kind of light and airy back there. This is not a focal point. This is just really kind of giving us a little bit of depth behind our image. All right, that's good. We'll set that aside to dry. All right, I am going to use Memento Black to, to ink my images. Um, Memento Black is the ink you want to use when you're going to use Stampin' Blends. They are alcohol-based markers, so you don't want to use an alcohol-based ink. All right, get that nice and inked up and stamp it right here on basic white. Now, I'm going to stamp one of these little branches, and I didn't even show you where this is going to go. This is going to go on the inside of our card. Let me pick up my card and show you the inside. This is a dark card base, so you need to add in a white piece. So, of course, we have to fancy it up, too. All right, so let's start with that big flower. Um, here I used pumpkin pie, but I think I want to try Calypso Coral this time. And I'm going to use the light Calypso Coral marker, and I'm going to just go petal by petal, filling in each one. And I am using the bullet tip end of my marker. I find I have much better control when I do the bullet tip end. Uh, play with yours, of course, and see. Uh, the more you use the brush tip, the uh, more flexible it gets, I guess you could say. And um, I really just feel like I or I'm not able to stay in the lines quite as well as when I use this bullet tip. All right, so go through here, color this in, and go slow. You know, one of my problems is that I'm always in a hurry. I'm always rushing. So don't do that when you're coloring. That way you'll stay in, in the lines. Now take the dark, and we're gonna add a little bit of dark between the petals. Anywhere that a petal is overlapping another petal, and also where you see these little these little marks the artist has shown us where we want to add a little bit of extra color so go through and add i need my glasses you guys i used to never need glasses and these days i need them more and more but if you have glasses pull them out You'll be able to stay in the lines even better if you have your glasses on for sure. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit back here, kind of going around those back petals. 
And then I'm gonna do this middle part right here in the dark. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more over here. Now I want to blend that out. So I'm gonna go back with my light and just push that color out. And over here where it's real close, you can just go all the way over. You don't have to do petal by petal, but just make sure these ones that are poking out over here that you wanna stay in those lines. Otherwise, you're going to get color where you don't want it. All right, there we go. I like that. So you can see the difference between the Calypso and the pumpkin pie. You can decide whichever one you like the best. All right, now let's do those large or those smaller flowers. And I'm going to use Moody Mauve Light. And these are so small that really we're not going to even attempt to do any shading here. Um, we'll do good to stay in the lines in those little bitty petals. Okay, there's that one. And then we'll do these. Moody Mauve is a, an in color. Stampin' Up! has five in colors each catalog and they only stay around for two years and then they retire. Every now and then they come back as a core color, but for the most part, they retire. All right, this is actually new. So we have this catalog here, 23, 24, and 24, 25 before it retires. All right, how about this one right here? Let's do Daffodil Delight. And again, you know what? Let's do the opposite way. Um, I know that some of you like to do the dark first. So let's do the dark first. I'm gonna go in the middle of the petals right here where those lines are. And I'm just gonna kind of flick that color there. And then I'm gonna add it up here on the tips of these flowers. Okay, um, I also am gonna color in the middleest, the middleest, is that a word? The, the most central part of the flower. And then I'm gonna take my light and blend it all together. So whichever way you wanna start with the dark or the light, I find like sometimes if I use my dark first, I'm a little heavy handed and I've added too much dark. But I think that looks pretty good. While we have our Daffodil Delight out, let's do this one too. I'm gonna do all light. And this, this little stem is gonna go on the inside, like I showed you at the beginning. Okay, and then you can take your dark. And I'm just gonna kind of flick color up the center, just like that. All right, now for our leaves. I'm gonna go with Old Olive, the old standby. I think Old Olive is a really good green for foliage, whether it be trees or leaves or grass. It just is really a good one. Um, now I'm using my light and these petals or these leaves are split. They have a line down the middle. So I'm gonna take my dark and color just one half with the dark. All right, there's that one. They're kind of hiding in amongst the flowers like that. All right, well, I have this out. Let's do the larger leaf. And there we go. Now, take your light and let's just add a little more dimension and interest by coloring half of each of those leaves with the dark. Now, lucky for us, this stamp set has dies, so there will be no fussy cutting of this. You know, I love to fussy cut, but this is a little too much even for me. But thankfully, we don't have to worry about it because we're just gonna use that die to cut it out. 
All right, last, I'm gonna take the old olive dark and just kind of flick some color here where those lines are. Remember the artist likes to tell us where we need some different color by adding in those hash marks. And then I'm just gonna take my light and blend it all together like that. Okay, so now we have the center of the flowers. I'm gonna take Daffodil Delight and do Daffodil Delight Dark. We're gonna add something else to the center of these flowers, the smaller ones in a minute. And then last but not least, we've got these little, these little doodads right here, okay? And I'm gonna use copper clay, this little stem of berries. Okay, now I want you to notice here, can you see this raised texture and on our textural element? That's where this comes in. This is our metallic enamel effects, gold and copper. And I'm gonna take the copper and I'm going to just do a dot and come straight up on each of these. Now, you might think, why did you color it if you're gonna do that? Well, the color fills in any space below that you might not happen to get all the way filled in. Um, and then I'm gonna take um, the, the gold and I'm gonna do these flowers. Now this, this enamel effects is gonna take a while to dry. I would say at least 30 minutes. So you're gonna need to set this aside and trust me when I say, set it somewhere else, not on your table. If I leave these on my table, every single time I end up putting something on it. So, you know, like take it to a window seal and set it in, in the window seal. Now, this, these textural elements, these are available online and they're awesome. I'm gonna add a little copper bead of this to our textural, textural element as well. Okay, now, because of the video, I have done most of this ahead of time. I'm gonna set this way over here so I can make a card with it later. And I have this right here, and I have this. Now, the dies to cut those out, remember, are on here. The big one, it goes here, and this one is for here. Now, I have also cut out a Blackberry Bliss frame using the radiating stitches dies. And I have cut out a couple mossy meadow leaves and a couple of old olive leaves. Again, that's from this set right here. And I think we're ready to put it all together. Let's grab our watercolor piece. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is to put on my frame and I'm gonna use our foam adhesive sheets. We have foam adhesive strips that would work well here too, but I don't have any right now. So I'm gonna make my own with our foam strips. All right, so just cut them narrow enough to fit on your frame. This is kind of like making a shaker card, except we don't have to worry about anything, you know, slipping out. You don't have to connect the edges. There's that one. And last but not least, one more right here. Okay. Now let's put that in the middle of our little watercolor wash. And I'm gonna grab regular dimensionals for this. And I'm just gonna put them here in the center because in a, in a minute we're gonna slide some things behind it and I wanna make sure I have room for that. So I'm gonna put this right about there, okay? Now, you know, let me, I'm gonna try something else. I want it to be a little bit higher than the frame. So what I'm gonna do is stack another dimensional right on top. One thing you could do is put the dimensionals here and here so that it would be on the frame. But I'm gonna, I just put them in the middle and that way it's a little bit taller than my frame. Okay, now let's grab some liquid glue. Oops, not that end. We don't want that end, we want this end. I'm gonna take my, first I'm gonna start with my mossy meadow and I'm gonna tuck that back there. And I'm gonna take my old olive 
and tuck that one back here. I'm gonna take my other mossy meadow and tuck it back here. And I think I'm just gonna leave that like that. Now we're gonna to need to push those down so that that glue will set Well, come on guys, stay where you were put. Now, the textural element, let me grab one. I have one finished. Isn't that neat? I think it's just beautiful. And we're gonna put this down here as well, coming out from behind like that. You know, this guy, I wanna push him down a little bit and move him over a tad like that. There we go, very nice. Now I have one left over, but I don't think we need it. I don't think I need it. All right, so I'm gonna take my linen thread, just a small piece like that. Okay, and make a small bow. And we'll put our glue dot on the back and Use my take your pick tool to get that off and put that right down here. All right, now let's put it on our card base. I have a Blackberry Bliss card base and I think I'm gonna use dimensionals too. I mean, we've already got a lot of dimension. Why don't we add a little bit more? You will need to get a non-machinable stamp for this. They're about, I think they're about a dollar now, but that means that it will not be, it won't go through the machine at the postal service and get messed up. All right, so let's put that there. Now for the inside, just a three and three fourths by five inch basic white. There will be a supply list on my blog for you guys. So um, supply list and measurements. So make sure you jump over there and grab that. This is a piece of our um, Autumn Leaves Designer Series paper that has been so hot, so popular. It's been in and out of stock quite a bit, but it is coming back in stock, so make sure you grab it. It's got these beautiful metallic tones right here on the back side. Now let's stamp our sentiment. I'm gonna do that in Blackberry Bliss. Grateful for you, right there. And then I'm gonna take this little guy and I'm gonna add a dimensional. I even like to use dimensionals on the insides of my cards. And we'll put that right there. Oops, smeared my ink just a tad. Okay, so there's the inside. Last but not least, don't these little, these little gold dots look like embellishments? Well, they are also the gold enamel effects. So I'm just gonna put a little dot and a little dot, 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 dot. Uh, maybe one more right there. All right, and it looks like on my original, I didn't put the dots in the center of these guys. And there you have it. Now I've gotta go and put this in the window of my studio so that I don't smash it with something. <laughs> now I gotta let those dots dry. But there you go, a beautiful card using our Fruitful Blessings, a nice fall card. Um, you know, the sentiment all the way. All right, you guys, thanks for joining me. Again, click the link here on YouTube, go back to my blog, grab that free PDF, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks everybody, have fun stamping, bye-bye.